Good morning everyone, I'm Morgan Donner and today I'd like to show you how to resize a tiny pattern in a book into a large real life size usable pattern using just your standard at home computer and printer. There are lots of really awesome books out there that contain small scaled versions of pattern pieces and that's particularly common in books about historical clothing because often these patterns are coming from a specific historical extant garment. Because they are taken from a particular historical item, they are not like modern sewing patterns where you might have that little packet with size 6 through 14. They usually just have that one specific person's size and unless you happen to be the exact same size as this random person from 400 years ago, the pattern's probably not going to fit you. But that said, having a pattern that is enlarged to life size, even if that's not quite your size, is still a really handy starting point for making your own pattern that does fit you well. If you don't happen to have easy access to a printer, then definitely check out Bernadette Vanner's video on manually drawing out a scaled up pattern. I'll put a link for that in the description box. But if you do in fact have a printer and a camera and a computer with Windows 10 paint, then Let's go ahead and continue. Start off by laying the page with a pattern that you want flat. You don't want any bubbles or curves since that will distort the image. Similarly, you need to take the picture from as flat of an angle as possible. A scanner would be even better for this purpose, but I don't have one, so a cell phone picture will just have to do. Don't take the picture from a side angle like this. That will also really distort the image. You want the camera to look nice and flat like the book. If looking through the viewfinder on your camera, you want those grid marks around the edge of the image to match up with straight edges of the screen. When I tilt the camera down at an angle, those vertical lines have started tilting as well and the pattern now looks quite a bit different, which is no good. So line up those grid edges as best as you can. Get your new picture onto your computer in whatever your preferred method might be. Now that you have it saved in a folder somewhere, I would recommend opening it up in a photo editing type program. I'm using PicMonkey.com because it's free, but if you have Photoshop or something similar, please feel free to use whatever you're comfortable with. The main goal is just to neaten up the picture a bit before we print it. First, I'm going to rotate it because having a sideways picture is just kind of annoying to me. And then I'll crop it down to remove some of this dead space around the outside of the actual pattern I want. Next, I'll go ahead and reduce the saturation down because I don't have a color printer and seeing the image on my screen as black and white will help me get a better sense for how the pattern will look once it's printed. The background is looking a little gray, so I'll adjust the brightness to make the white background as light as possible. Be careful about going too light though. You don't want to completely erase the grid that's in the background. We're going to need that to count how many inches wide and tall our image is and use that to print it out correctly. Looks like this one is about 32.5 inches wide and 21 inches tall. Save your new masterpiece on your computer somewhere. Now we have the initial image straight from the camera and the new altered version. If you want, you can skip the photo editing steps and just use the image straight as it is from the camera, but this way you use a little bit less paper and a little bit less printer ink. Anyways, take whichever image that you would like and open it in Microsoft Paint. Under File and then Properties, there's a little window that shows you how big your image currently is in inches, which is great. We already know that the background grid that the image needs to be is 32.5 by 21 inches and we are pretty close here but not quite perfect. Because I am very lazy and terrible at math, let's just go ahead and toss those numbers into a percentage calculator to see how much smaller the image needs to be. Uh, 8.6%. Back to the paint program, if you select resize, you'll get the option to make your image a little bit bigger or smaller. Unfortunately, it will not let me reduce down to 91.4%, uh, so I'm just going to round it up to 92%. I know that the pattern will be too small for me as it is, so erring on the larger side won't really hurt. Now, if we recheck the image in Properties, 
we see that it is now sized at 31.75 by 21.71, which I'm going to go ahead and just declare close enough. To print this, I'm going to go to print under file. I don't see an option to specify scaling here, so I'll see if it's available under preferences. Ah, yes, under the advanced tab, I see that the scaling is currently off, which would actually work fine. But the thing that you really want to avoid is any option that says fit to paper or shrink to printable area or scale to fit, anything like that. We just went through the trouble of making the pattern the right size. Don't let your printer try and shrink it down to fit on a single sheet of paper. God damn it. Okay. Let's see if page setup has some more scaling options for us. Yep. Yep. Another damn scaling option. Okay. I don't want it to fit on one by one pages. I want the image to be at a full 100% of its proper size. Okay. Let's try that again. Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. Excellent. Double check your printed grid against a ruler and as I already knew, mine is just a smidge bigger than true, but that'll only work in my favor in this case. Sort out the various pages and tape them together, folding back or cutting off the excess paper at the edges and verifying that the edges are fitting together perfectly by measuring the grid marks where each page meets one another. Add some tape to the back as well for some extra security and stabilization. You are now free to cut out your newly resized pattern. You could add some seam allowance now before cutting the edges out if that's your preference. Whether you add it now or later really doesn't matter. Just make sure you don't forget about it. I hope that was useful to you. Uh, I'm sorry if it doesn't work with your particular computer. Unfortunately, I don't have a way to verify that this will work with every possible combination of printer, uh, photo software, camera style, and so on not to even touch on operating systems. Also, I bet you a very shiny button that there is a much more clean and efficient and neat way of doing this, but I really wanted to try and stick with software that was free and hopefully available to a large chunk of people. I'm sure someone out there really appreciates that. With all that, my video is done. I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely evening and have fun printing out all the new patterns.